Something happened in Zelda's transition from 2D to 3D. Pretty much all of the 3D games in the series, they, they have all of these creepy, scary moments peppered throughout in pretty much every game. You know, pretty much. So, with a brand new Zelda game dropping today, a remake of Link's Awakening, which is sure to be not creepy at all, I thought it would be fun to take a look back at my top 10 favorite creepy moments from Zelda. Oh, Majora's Mask, I can make a list just for you. In the Stockpot Inn located in East Clock Town, between midnight and 6 a.m. every night, a large hand belonging to an unknown character emerges from the toilet. It's almost corpse-like in appearance. It's got this moaning, creepy voice asking out in anguish for paper. <laughs> Yay! Apparently it's inspired by old Japanese ghost tales of, of a hand that reaches out and grabs you when you sit on the toilet. Which is absolutely terrifying. Skyward Sword takes this even further. In the Night Academy, the player can discover yet another ghostly hand emerging from a toilet begging for paper. And there's even a side quest that you can completely ruin in amazing fashion. One of Groose's lackeys, Colin, will ask Link to deliver a love letter. Link can, of course, deliver the love letter on his behalf, but where is the fun in that? Another option is to give the love letter to the hand in the toilet. <laughs> If you do this, the following night, you can see the ghost hand caressing Colin as he sleeps. What in the hell? And do you know what's worse than getting caressed by a ghost hand while you sleep? Getting caressed by a ghost hand likely covered in feces. Skulltulas are kind of creepy in the first place. Skulls, spiders, both scary things. But, in Kakariko Village, in Ocarina of Time, in an innocent-looking house, walking in, you discover a goddamn nightmare. The House of Skulltula. Only, these aren't normal Skulltulas. These are people. At least, they once were. They're people who've been cursed and are slowly turning in to Skulltulas. And they've all been quarantined to this house like some sort of colony of lepers. I mean, they're really more tragic characters than scary ones, but still. <laughs> This guy gives me the creeps. Gross. They can recover their own gold Skulltula tokens. Wallmasters. I don't know what it is about hands. I just don't like the idea of someone touching me. <laughs> just don't touch me. So of course, the damn Wallmaster enemies have always given me the creeps. They're literally monstrified hands. They were creepy and linked to the past, but the Ocarina of Time versions were the worst. Especially at the Forest Temple. I know the Shadow Temple is supposed to be the creepy one, but there's something about the Forest Temple that really got to me. And the fact that they could be invisible? I don't like it. They grab you and do who knows what to you. Next thing you know, you're at the beginning of the room. How did you even get there? Ah, Breath of the Wild. Such a, such a whimsical game. Very chill, very relaxing. And then, and then there's that damn horse fairy. It's a fairy that can revive horses. This thing is creepy as hell. Fairy in name alone. This thing is terrifying. It's got detached floating hands like frickin' Bongo Bongo, a skeleton neck, and if it finds out you killed your horse, it knows, and it's pissed. Yetta's transformation. In the Snow Peak ruins in Twilight Princess lives, of course, a couple of Yetis. Yetta and Yeto. After completing a series of tasks, in typical Zelda fashion, Yetta agrees to give Link their Twilight Shard, a piece of the cursed Twilight Mirror. However, just before that happens, Yetta gazes into the mirror, which then corrupts her. Ah! She gets transformed into a monster named Blizzetta, and becomes the dungeon's boss. I mean, once it's all over and done with it, it has a happy ending, but it was still very shocking seeing it for the first time. Pamela's father. In Majora's Mask, in the Akana Valley region, there's a strange music box house being occupied by a young girl named Pamela, who's seemingly living there all on her own. She's frightened and won't let Link inside of the house. However, once you've gotten the water flowing again, Pamela will slip out and go investigate the well near her house. Though, she'll run back inside and hide if she spots Link. If you can get inside the house without her noticing, you'll make a surprising discovery in her basement.
locked inside of a closet is her mummified father. Dear God, this terrified 12-year-old me. Dear God. Now, I can't not include this one. Some of the weirdest, strangest, creepiest imagery ever used in a Zelda game. In Twilight Princess, after defeating the Dark Insect Queen, Laneiru, a light spirit, gives you a vision. Meant to be informative, really, it's creepy nightmare fuel. It's a message that informs Link of a group of people called interlopers, who are powerful sorcerers that were sealed away to the Twilight Realm. Laneiru warns Link, those who do not know the danger of wielding power will, before long, be ruled by it. The Redeads, a now classic Zelda enemy with the most iconic, distinctive scream. God damn. Particularly, I remember first playing Ocarina of Time and transforming into an adult Link, going through the seven year gap, meeting Sheik, and then stepping out of the Light Temple for the very first time. Hyrule Castle was in ruins! It was honestly such a jarring transition. It was shocking. All of the people were gone, and instead they were replaced with. I hate these guys! The rest of Majora's Mask. Seriously, just the rest of this game. It's, it's so weird, it's so bizarre, it's so unsettling. Everything from the music, the ambience, to the color palette. You got this big, terrifying moon falling out of the sky that for some reason has a face that no one is talking about. The mask salesman, the shell of yourself that you can leave with the allergy of emptiness. What's that face? Jesus! Even transforming into the different races, it looks so, it looks so painful. The sense of impending doom and dread with the clock constantly ticking away. It's no surprise to me at all that it's one of the most divisive Zelda games ever released, and it absolutely made a huge impression on me if, if you couldn't tell by my Majora's Mask tattoo. Dead Hand in the Bottom of the Well. Just the worst. The Dead Hand. Of course the Dead Hand in the entire Bottom of the Well sequence in Ocarina of Time is just awful, <laughs> but great at the same time. Just the thought of going to the bottom of a well, it's creepy as hell. Haunted wells are actually quite prominent in Japanese folklore. But the well, having an entire hidden dungeon inside, complete with torture devices, fake walls, more of those damn wall masters, it really is the scariest dungeon in any Zelda game, period. Plus, the game forces you to go back and play this area as a child to add to the player's sense of vulnerability. And then, the dungeon ends with you walking into this room, full of these elongated hands sticking out of the ground. Again, with the hands. Then the hand grabs your face, and the dead hand appears. Just look at that face! Those T-Rex arms! And he takes a bite out of you, he's just, he's just the worst. I actually highly recommend you guys check out my Deep Cuts video on the bottom of the well, which discusses the origins of the dungeon, the dead hand, and a couple of theories. It's a fun one. And that is it for my top 10 scariest moments in the Legend of Zelda. I'm now gonna go and escape and lose myself in the colorful cartoon world that is Link's Awakening, where they won't have any of this stuff. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.